Today on Zola Levitt Presents. Coming up on Zola Levitt Presents, we answer letters from the viewers with issues you'll want to know about. The following is a paid program by Zola Levitt Ministries. My heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Zola Lepp presents. Shalom Havarim, welcome friends to our program. I'm Miles Weiss. And I'm Catherine Weiss, and welcome to Zola Levitt Presents. Today, we're going to hear from you, our viewers. We love it when you write to us. We love hearing what you have to say, and we love answering your questions. Yes, we do. We have some great letters today we want to go over with you, some really profound issues that people write to us about, concerns they have theologically, prophetically. And so let's start with a letter from R.S., and he asks, um, he says, Dear Miles, Christ, we say Mashiach, Messiah, told the Jews that they would not see him again until they said, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Much of the world is watching for his return. Are mm -hmm. the Jewish people saying this as well? Well, this goes to the heartbeat of why we have this program, why we ask for your support. We want to keep bringing this message to the entire world because right. we're getting closer to the time of his return. And he's not coming to Washington, D.C. He's not coming to Mexico City. Right. He's not coming to London or Paris. He is returning to Jerusalem, right. according to the scriptures. Zechariah 14 and Acts chapter 2 speak about this Messiah coming back to the Mount of Olives. So the question that you're asking about are the Jewish people looking for him? We are looking for Messiah, but there's a stumbling block because of the political history of the church vis-a-vis -vis the Jewish people. Uh, people sometimes come to me, especially at our congregation, and they say, I just am so impressed that you understand who Jesus is, and yet so many of your people don't know who he is. Well, that's why we bring our testimony. That's why we share our stories, because right. when my people look at the gospel, they don't always see Jesus first. First they see the Crusades, the Inquisition, the pogroms in Europe, and the Holocaust, all of which they associate with non-Jews, or in our minds, before Yeshua, Christians. So right. there's a huge stumbling block of blood spilt and persecution and exile that is connected with the gospel, so it makes it harder for us. But there's some good news growing in the land, isn't there? Well, I, I think that we're further obviously than, than 30 years ago, mm -hmm, correct. but the, there's revival happening mm -hmm. in Israel, and that's not something that you won't hear on a secular news channel, mm -hmm. but you'll hear it here. You know, there's revival, and there's, there's such a, a, a beautiful partnering that's happening in these times yes. between the church and the Jewish people. Yes. And it has to do with, with ministries like ours, where we are saying that we need to be a bridge builder. We need to be an answer to the people that might have been hurt by the past, views mm -hmm. of Christianity, mm -hmm. and there's bringing a new face of Christianity, yes. which is this one new man. Yes, the growing towards a one new man where all will believe in the Messiah of Israel. Mm -hmm. Now, Matthew 23, 39 that you refer to, it says, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. It leads up to what's called the spine of theological prophecy in the New Testament, with this, which is Matthew 24. And Matthew 24, 14 tells the disciples that this gospel will go into all the world, will be preached around the world, and then the end will come. So we have this dual focus. Mm -hmm on the part of the Lord where he's saying to the Jewish people, you better call on me, you better watch for me, I'm mm -hmm. coming. Mm -hmm. And also says to the disciples that this gospel will go around the world. And how would that happen? Because the Jewish disciples who made up the first church would go out to the whole world and preach the gospel mm -hmm. to the Gentiles, multiplying mm -hmm. the ability of this good news to go around the world. And we mm -hmm. see that now with the gospel arising in China and in mm -hmm. India and in mm -hmm. Africa and, and in Iran. Around the world, the gospel is growing because of those seminal words that Yeshua spoke back mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. I love the story that we heard from our friends in China when we interviewed Brother Yun on the Mount of Olives. If you haven't seen that program, you need to see it. It's about the Back to Jerusalem movement that's coming mm -hmm. out of China. 
And I spoke to Brother Yoon's uh, agent, his young friend, about um, Mega Voice, this incredible small pocket-sized, solar-powered, waterproof audio Bible in the languages of the unreached people groups of the earth. It's no longer generations of translators, right. scribes uh, translating the word from, in, in, from original languages into the languages of the unreached mm -hmm. groups. But now it's an instantaneous digital age right. where the gospel's going around the world. And he said, well, I can go one more, one better than that, because we realize since we're in China, this was an expensive little piece of equipment that was developed between Israel, Canada, and Australia. But they said, we go one better. What we do is we wire our people and we send them into the darkest places, into Iran, into Afghanistan, into Korea, North Korea. They send right. missionaries from China into these places and they are wired to be a hot spot mm -hmm. so that everyone within a certain radius is offered a free download of the video gospel in their own language. And I thought, we are at the gate, we are near mm -hmm. to the coming of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Yeah. And I do believe that we are closer than we think, Miles. Yeah. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, yes, we are looking for a Messiah, as our friend David Rubin said. He's an Orthodox yeah. Jewish man, the former mayor of, our, of uh, Shiloh. He said, Miles, we'll all be on the mountain looking for a Messiah. Mm -hmm. And if you're right, I'll be like this. It's Jesus. If I'm right, you'll be like this praying like davening, praying like a Jewish person would pray. And so we know that there's a shared destiny as we look for the coming of the King of the Jews and the Savior of the world. Hope that helps you. We'll answer more of your questions after the break. For insightful perspectives on Israel and Bible prophecy, ask for our free monthly newsletter. The Levitt Letter. At levitt.com you can read the newsletter, watch the TV program, or visit our online store. Stay current with us on social media via Facebook and Twitter. Come with us on a tour of Israel or Petra, or a cruise to Greece and Ephesus. Please contact us for more information. Our offer on this program, an epic love story, Jew and Gentile. One in Messiah by Miles Weiss. This booklet answers some questions you may have about timely and vital issues. For example, is Jesus coming soon? How did the church lose its Jewish identity? What is the shared destiny of Jews and Christians? An epic love story will take you on a journey through time into the heart and mind of the Apostle Paul when he was inspired to write to the Roman church. Call 1-800-WONDERS and ask for an epic love story. Our offer to you is the epic love story. It is the book that Miles wrote about Romans 9 through 11, and it is all based on the scripture that God has not forsaken his people and that it's the restoration time that we're in. And it's also a little bit of a toke, a little bit of touch of how to witness to a Jewish person. Mm -hmm. You know, we as Gentiles are to provoke the Jews to jealousy yes. so that they want what we have. Yes. I remember when we were leading a tour in Israel, uh, somebody came up to me and, and reminded me of that when they were a young Israeli and these tours would come, mm -hmm. that they would see these people praying and having this presence about them that they wanted yes. and that they were viewing from a distance, but yes. they knew that they had something that they were lacking in their own life. Right. So really coming to Israel is, is as a witness. It is. How we operate in the land, you know, we have the fruit of the Spirit, obviously, but the prayers, the songs, yes. th just the testimony of why we care because we believe the Word and we act on the Word. Yeah. It is such a testimony. That person later came to she faith. She became a believer. And then joined one of our tours because yes. she wanted to have the full experience of what it was like to be an Israeli Jewish believer yeah. with a Christian tour group. Yes. Even though she had lived in the land for many years, yes. she wanted to experience it in yeah. that light and she had a great time. Right, that fellowship right. she really was enjoying. Well, let's go to another letter here. This comes from SNRS in North Carolina. They say, Dear ZLM, 
We see news about the plight of Jews in Israel. Is it true? They're shown sleeping on the streets and destitute, particularly those who are flown in from Russia and other countries. We didn't think the Israeli government would fly them in only to leave them in such dire need. Well, first of all, some ministries, some organizations that are mm -hmm. fundraising will take uh, what I call the crying Russian syndrome. They will, they will highlight the worst of the worst, the most difficult of the most difficult. The fact is there are Israelis yeah. in need. There are 22% of the Israelis are living, but they live below the poverty line. It's primarily Holocaust survivors, sad to say. It's also new immigrants and even some Arab Israelis, the ultra-Orthodox. It's a mixed group. But they do have issues there. At the same time the economy is booming, it hasn't filtered down to everyone. Mm -hmm. And so there are some people that are suffering. Uh, now, what I encourage people to do is to be aware of organizations that are raising money for social activity, mm -hmm. but they are decidedly anti-gospel, anti-messianic body, and against the work that we and others in the land mm -hmm. are doing. Mm -hmm. We want to support the groups that are doing social work. They're blessing the poor, but they're also bringing them the good news. Right, the and eternal that's how salvation. We do it. Exactly. Uh, you know, it's one thing to invest in the nation, and that's good. Yes. Genesis 12, we are to bless the children of Abraham, absolutely. But there's also the, the mandate from Galatians 6.10 to bless those, to do good to all, especially those of the household of faith. Right, right. So we want to support people that are bringing the gospel right. along with social services. Yeah, be, be aware if they're bringing the gospel and if they're also standing with messianics. Messianic is somebody who is a Jewish person who believes in his Messiah, in Jesus as his Messiah. And it doesn't have to have any other trapping than that. You're right. just simply a man of faith. Hmm. You didn't convert from Judaism. No, it's not a sin to be a Jew. You converted from sin and you kept your Jewish identity. Yeah, and I think that it's important that when we give, I know for us personally, we want to give our funds to organizations, to bodies, to living fruitful works in Israel that are doing the work of helping the poor, mm -hmm. but also bringing them, like you said, the most important gift. A friend of mine in Israel said, if you bless Israel, that's wonderful, but if you hide the gift of Yeshua, then you're keeping the greatest blessing from us. Absolutely. And I believe that. Yeah. So here's another letter. It comes from GL, and it's kind of a complex letter, so I'll paraphrase it. It speaks about the, the covenant with Abraham the grafting in of the Gentiles, and the different views of Scripture and the world that the Christians and the Jews have. So let me, let me uh, try to paraphrase it, and I'll, I'll read you my answer here. Uh, you've touched on a mystery that is often misunderstood by Christians. Jewish thinking is holistic, organic, and corporate. That's why the disciples were looking for a national redemption, and the church goes for individual salvation. And sometimes people think mm -hmm. that it's either or, but God can do both. Mm -hmm. He can save an individual Jewish person at the same time that I'm believing Romans 11:26 mm -hmm. that all Israel will be saved. But it's two different ways of viewing the world. God's capable of both, which offends our tendency to put him in a box. Mm. While we fervently reach for individual Jewish souls to recognize our Messiah, we know that the time will come as I said, when all Israel will be saved. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's some of these, these seeming dichotomies are throughout the scripture. That's why sometimes it's hard to understand the person of Messiah because the Jewish people are looking for Mashiach ben Joseph, the, the, the son of Joseph, right. and others, Mashiach ben David, so the suffering servant and the reigning king. Well, which is he? Mm -hmm. Is the Messiah a suffering servant like Joseph mm -hmm. or is he a reigning king like David? Well, he's both, mm -hmm. right? right. He is the suffering servant who gave his life as the Lamb of God, mm -hmm. Isaiah 53, John 1, 19, but he's also the reigning king who will mm -hmm. return as the Lion of the tribe of Judah according to the mm -hmm. book of Revelation. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And it's our job to be like Abraham and to pray, you know, to pray that, to stand in that intercession for the one you know, but to believe for the whole nation. Yeah, and while, while we're waiting for Revelation 5.5, 5, when he comes as the Lion of Judah, let's stand with Israel. Whether they are believers in Jesus or not, let's stand with them because that is our mandate going back to the beginning of the Bible, mm -hmm. is to stand with what God is standing with, and that is including the precious seed that he has brought through the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We'll be back after this.
the Sea of Galilee, Capernaum, the Valley of Armageddon, Jerusalem, the Mount of Olives. The wonders of the Bible can only be experienced in Israel. Zola Tours invites you to join Miles and Catherine Weiss on a dream vacation you will never forget. We offer a deluxe 10-day tour in the spring and fall with an optional extension to see the rose-red city of Petra or cruise Greece where the Apostle Paul witnessed to the Gentiles. To experience the study tour of a lifetime, call 1-800-WONDERS or visit us at levitt.com. Catherine and I recently heard from a pastor of a large church here in America who asked us regarding the preaching, teaching of the message of Israel and the importance of Israel to the church. He was concerned that if he did that with his congregation that they would think that he was anti-Arab, anti-Palestinian so-called. And so he wanted to get some advice, some counsel about that. And I wanted to address that because I think there may mm -hmm. be others out here, congregants, pastors, leaders, elders, deacons, whoever you are, and you may be concerned that because we promote Israel and we believe in the reestablishing, the rebirth of Israel because it's in the Bible, that that means we're anti-Arab and nothing could be further from the truth. Uh, we've dedicated our lives and this ministry believes that God is not willing that any should perish, but all come to everlasting life. And we have had our uh, involvement with Arab ministries in the land and in America for, since the beginning of our, our work. We have uh, connections with believers who are Arabs. We believe that it's a blessing to the heart of God mm -hmm. when Jews and Arabs get along together. And the glue for us is Shar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it was a mandate that God gave us when we began this ministry, the ministry that we have together as a Jewish believer and as a Gentile believer, to hold the identity of, of Jesus as a Messiah of the mm. Jews, yes. but also to always pray for the, our Arab cousins and to mm. reach for them. Yeah, for over 10 years, maybe 15 years, I've been preaching a message called Healing the Family Feud which I think explains what's happened between I, the sons of Isaac and the sons of Ishmael. And it's up to us to be reaching for both. We need to be reaching for the sons of Ishmael, the Arab peoples, as well as the sons of Isaac, the Jewish people. Listen to what- I like what you say, Miles. You say to be pro-Israel mm. is not to be anti-Arab. Yeah, say that again. That's good. <laughs> well, to, to be pro-Israel or to be pro Jerusalem mm -hmm. is not to be anti-Arab, exactly. that God has an answer for us, right. for the, both the people groups. Yeah, and we need to come through, the, we all need to come through the door of the Messiah. Listen to Ephesians chapter two, in verse 14, he is our shalom, the one who made the two into one and broke down the middle wall of separation. Within his flesh, he made powerless the hostility. Yeah. And that goes for male and female, Jew and Gentile, Jew and Arab. It goes for all of us who find ourselves in the body of Messiah. We are to reach for mm. and reach to one another in love. So to be pro-Israel mm -hmm. is not to be anti-Arab. Absolutely. Quite the contrary. Right. We want all to know the love of God. Well, and we were given in, by the Ministry of Tourism when we were doing our TV show, one of the, one of the vehicles that they helped us have mm. while we were going and doing these TV shows, you know, all the TV, that's filmed, it's all filmed in Israel. I mean, we are there in the land and wanting to bring you the authentic message from the land itself, except for, except for this time in the studio, all the teachings done in Israel. So, but one of the, our drivers was a, a Muslim and he was just the sweetest man and we got to share our faith with him. And one of his testimonies was to you, Miles, he said, where your people are, order. Where my people are, chaos. chaos. <laughs> he was pretty funny. He was very funny. But it's, it's not to bash the Arabs again, but it's to bring an understanding that unless the Arab people come into the light of Messiah, they won't have the order that God wants them to have. Mm -hmm. When Islam is ruling over them, yes. it's a spirit, it's a dark spirit, yes. it's an antichrist spirit, and that antichrist spirit will bring chaos mm -hmm. into their life. So. It's our job to bring the gospel. It's our job to bring the light. It's our job to bring the love. Mm -hmm. We are never anti-Arab. We right. are pro-Arabs hearing the good news of the gospel. Right. We're pro-humanity. <laughs> so here's another one that is kind of related, but uh, this is Dear Miles and Catherine, when we discovered Zola in 1988, we could not afford pay TV, so we were grateful for your newsletter. 
and study book it offers. By the way, the newsletter is free to you. Just contact us. We'll send you the Levitt letter. Now we can enjoy your informative programs anytime through our computer and on TV. Praise the Lord for creative inventors. Uh, many religions preach that people who don't join their religion will go to hell. We're glad your ministry teaches unity and mercy, not conflict and threats. Uh, referring to an article that we wrote, we published called Hate Islam But Love the Muslims. And we like the way you connect the Old Testament and New Testament. And here's one that's personal for us. Uh, Miles and Catherine, your marriage demonstrates the union of Messianic Jews and Christian beliefs better than words can say, God bless your union. Mm. Well, we received the blessing. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, re to recount a, an interesting thing that happened to us when we had the blessing and the privilege of speaking into Tehran, Iran. Mm -hmm. We were on Hormoz Shariat's, Dr. Shariat's television program for an hour that was broadcast in Farsi, their native language, mm -hmm. and translated into English in our ears so we could hear the Farsi and understand it. And for an hour, we had a chance to preach and teach into Iran to new believers and pre-believers who are gathered to hear the gospel, which is going into Iran mm -hmm. every evening by Hormoz Shariat's Iran Alive program. He said something fascinating to me. Now remember, these folks are coming out of Islam or recently come out of Islam, mm -hmm. which has the patriarchal anti-women mm -hmm. kind of a mentality within marriage. Right. And he said, Miles, before we went on the air, right before we went on the air, he said, Miles, they'll be listening to your words, but they'll be watching your marriage. Right. And we believe that we have an opportunity by the way we live and by the way we serve one another to demonstrate something of unity and love that can be a, a witness to those coming out of Islam mm -hmm. because there's a lot of heartache in those marriages. Yeah. Well, I'm grateful that God made a way for the women to have a voice in this time. You know, all through Scripture, whether it be Ruth or it's Esther or whomever the Lord chooses, where it be Mary Magdalene at the gate mm. waiting for the Messiah to return, you know, at the garden tomb. God gave women the ability to have a voice about the good news. Yeah. And we know that the man is the head of the house, but the woman is the neck and she turns the head. And so we know that we need to work together in order to bring the fullness of the gospel and demonstrate a home picture of the love of God. We want that for our Muslim friends. You want them to be liberated from the, the oppression of Sharia, the oppression that the Quran teaches about the alleged relationship between men and women. We'll be back after this. Hello, I'm Wayne Fournier, and I've been a supporter of Zona Levitt Ministries for many years. If you see this outreach as worthy of your financial support, please call us at 1-800-WONDERS. Visit us online at levitt.com or write to us at Zola, Box 12, 268, Dallas, Texas, 75225. We depend on your financial sustenance. Thank you. Welcome back to our letters section. We uh, have a letter here from KDF who writes, I enjoyed Miles' article in the last Levitt letter about Israel having America's back. I've always been pro-Israel and pro-Zionist also. To think that that tiny little country looking down the barrel of nations that hate it as the great I am looking after it, that in turn has the back of the great country, America. And uh, the question that comes is, whether, where is America in Bible prophecy? And this comes up a lot. Uh, well, there are no specifics about America. There's been a lot of conjecture based on the cult of Anglo-Israelism that has said over the decades that America as a child of England is one of the young lions that is spoken of later in prophecy, right. but it really doesn't stand up to scrutiny as much as the solid Word of God which speaks about those sheep nations and goat nations that God will judge. Yeshua said in the Gospels that He would come and He would judge nations according to whether they were sheep at his right hand or goats at his left. And so there is coming a reckoning for every nation regarding whether we stand with Israel and the Jewish people. Historically, America has been a great friend of Israel. There's been a, a symbiotic or a very connected relationship, uh, what they call the no daylight relationship. It was so close that they were in mutual contact about world events and politics and military mm -hmm. issues, 
uh, recently that has been less the case. Well, I think it has to do with people that have been influencing our governments or our schools, mainly Islam, and pulling us away from our Judeo-Christian values yeah. and bringing us more into a secular humanistic value, yes. which piggybacks um, yes. on a Islamic yeah. mindset. Yeah, it becomes a kind of like a perfect storm of anti-Israelism that can come to any nation. Mm -hmm. And uh, I believe that Zechariah chapter 14 really speaks about all the nations of the earth who will come against Israel at some point, Messiah himself will intervene. And here's what the Word of God says about the nations of the world. All the survivors from all the nations that attacked Jerusalem will go up from year to year to worship the king, Adonai Tzfaot, the Lord of armies, mm -hmm. and to celebrate Sukkot, tabernacles. Mm -hmm. Furthermore, if any of the nations on earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, Adonai Tzfaot, the Lord of armies, the Lord of uh, the heavens, they will have no rain. Well, I think the mandate is upon us to practice now blessing and being part mm -hmm. of and looking mm -hmm. towards this millennial future where there will be this time of uh, connecting with Israel when the real international one new man of Ephesians chapter 2 will come to pass in reality and the nations of the world will join themselves to the Jewish feast festival to go up to Jerusalem in the seasons of the Lord to worship the great king. Right. And if not, they will have no rain on their land, mm -hmm. which is a very serious problem. Right. So I think that the mandates that are written in Scripture have to do with standing with Israel, blessing Israel, blessing the sons of Abraham, and being prepared mm -hmm. to join in the celebration right. according to the way God says to celebrate. And as as a believer, we can we can rest in and be reassure, assured that you know. God, Jesus is our king and that our president is our isn't not our king. Right. Right? There is there is a higher accountability that we that we go to. Right. There's a higher authority than the political authorities of this world. The kings of the earth rage against the king of heaven, but he laughs. And so we want to be worshiping the one true king as we see the day approaching. We always like to end our program by reminding you, Shalu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit levitt.com to find our newsletter, along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Don't forget to order this week's resource by calling 1-800-WONDERS or you can purchase it from our catalog at levitt.com. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Please remember, Zola Levitt Ministries depends on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.